Yo, 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 guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of Marrow and Weekly. And today we have a guest coming on from Cure who is going to be explaining a little bit about something that I find very interesting, and that's data capturing when it comes to growing. I'm not going to give it all away, but it's something that we should be doing, and we've got the perfect guest uh, coming on to explain why we should be doing that. Uh, make sure, as always, to like and subscribe if you enjoy our content and hope you guys enjoy this show. And of course, always our in-house master grower and co-host is Dean. How's it going? What's up, everyone? Super, super excited for this conversation. Came about after meeting Chris quite recently. And this is something that I've thought about before, but I don't think, I haven't really explored. And uh, mm. yeah, I'm really, really keen to find out more about this, this specific topic today. Sweet, I'm gonna bring Chris in. Hey Chris, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and welcome, hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm gonna jump straight in with some questions about obviously uh, the, the subject being data capture and actually first, before we jump in, uh, you're with, uh, why don't you tell us just quickly in a few words what, uh, at, uh, what, what's going on at Cure and uh, what you guys do there? Uh, so yeah, Cure is an analytics facility. We look at various cannabinoid profiles um, within the within the cannabis plant, um, terpene profiles, heavy metal profiles. The need for that came to us when we started working with some rural growers and whatnot that were using denatured ethanol at the time to create alcohol extracts. And you can see the the difficulty there just with health hazards, mm -hmm. understanding that denaturants in alcohol, you know, you're upregulating the denaturants as well. So we saw the the, the need for for education there on health aspects and then right. as well as gene gardens which is a, a res institutional research facility that we've been using to kind of push my phd forward and that's mm. kind of trying to understand the different interactions between disease treatments and um various cultivars and then one of the aspects of that was the analytics tying back mm. into the earth. That uh, uh, ties in perfectly to uh, the topic today. And um, yeah, basically, so the guys that are listening, it's we haven't been doing any sort of data capturing around cannabis uh, for a few reasons, uh, which Chris will get into. And it is something that, I mean, in the States, for instance, they doing, they doing proper, you know, growing's not just a, you know, relying on web forums anymore and relying on, unfortunately, some YouTube videos and whatnot. There is a science to it, and especially as companies start pumping money into it, it's going to become more and more prevalent. Um, but Chris, yeah, give us a little bit of background as to why data capture has never been uh, such a big part of the cannabis uh, scene. So the primary reason I've seen in the past is that Coming from the background that cannabis was, it was an underground industry. So people were never given the opportunity to write things down. If mm. people wrote things down, it would generally be used against them in court. So the more information you wrote down, the more was against you. Yeah. So it's generally not in their nature to write things down. Yeah. Um, it's always been a side practice. And now with the industrial revolution of the herb coming, you know, the requirements is growing for, for writing things down. Yeah. So it's very unfortunate um, that we missed out on, on probably a good, okay, it's longer than 50 years, but I suppose an essay, especially with regards to like indoor and, and such where like data capture is so easy these days and so important, especially I suppose in indoor, but also outdoor. And we've missed out on a lot of that because the, leg the, the legislation was against us, uh, unfortunately. Um, and what would you recommend with regards to growers uh, growing? I mean, what kind of benefits are they going to be able to see when they, if they started going down the, the lines of uh, collecting data and keeping actual, um, yeah, uh, historical well, data you, on it? What you mentioned there already, now that legislation's opened up, people can start collecting data sets. So that's yeah. a joy. Mm -hmm. You know, so I see it more in the sense that once you've understood a larger amount of data, you could get to the point that you understand the in-chain consumer and you can mm. tie in how various cultivars fit in with those consumers. I mean, mm. if you think about it in the sense of fiber production for hemp, you're going to select for a cultivar that has a certain interlode, preferably a, a stretched interlode if you're looking for a fiber, a long straight fiber. If mm. you're looking for a medical cultivar, you would look for a specific cannabinoid profile, say. 
if you're looking for something for seed, you'd look for a large, strong seed. So understanding how the various metrics within the plant fit within the desired characteristics for that end chain consumer's use is, is essential. And you can see mm. the requirement for those, for those specific data sets growing. Um, especially if we look at the point that most of the cultivars coming into the country have all been imported. So the level of, lo of localization is low. So we need to thereafter ca characterize those cultivars within our, our local economy. Um, I, I can say economy to the sense mm. that if you think for an oil producer, a mill production, you know, would, would change, whereas a fiber producer would look for, at per gram of stock material. So yeah. we need to characterize how each cultivar fitted within its value chain. And you can't really do that without big data. So, something, so. something that I'm thinking of um, is like, and I'm trying to appeal to our, our, our audience as well, thinking of this, and it's like, it's a lot of home growers and small growers, you know, like small size, but I don't think that data capture should be limited to the yeah. big, the big uh, farmer or, you know, big, big agri companies because of a couple of things that I'm thinking of. It's, you know, if, if you want to get into say where you are now doing the research or you want to get into actually uh, producing, they're going to be looking for people that know how to grow on data. You can't, yeah. you know, you can't, I mean, Dean, we know how much of a struggle it is just to grow like, you know, small amounts of plants on uh, anecdotal evidence that we've sort of got from obviously, you know, your experience base is, uh, speaks a, a world, but, you know, to, to try to recall and be like, oh, you know, you know, but it, yeah, and, and if you're trying to, kind of, if you're trying to improve on, uh, oh, sorry, Chris. No, no, sorry. That's one uh, of the if, other things that you just mentioned with with data points is the skills transfer. So mm. an individual such as Dean may have a good understanding in cannabis, but mm. to be able to write those skill sets down and convey it to a secondary member is, is difficult for a lot of people. So I saw this in the beginning, where you have cannabis experts in their field that may know a lot, but mm. it's difficult for them to write that process down given the background and skill share with a colleague yeah. and in that same re in that same instance you know being a researcher people generally come out of a university setting not knowing much about the cannabis plants i was fortunate yeah. that i was brought up with the plants so it's a bit different but most of my colleagues at university didn't really have a good understanding of the plants. so you get this gap between industry experts that can't write things down and university mm -hmm. experts that haven't been exposed to, to the the actual yeah yeah yeah, yeah no so, it's a I mean, and is there a way you can recommend? I mean, Dean, for instance, I know you do a, a bit of a fair amount of keeping records and whatnot. Um, yeah, for and, me, it came uh, about with with relation to tr like if if I'm going in a home sense and I'm wanting to track if how if I'm improving or doing worse, how mm -hmm. can I how can I have a winning formula one time and then try recreate it without any kinds of historical data? So you've got a good harvest, you've you've maybe growing from clone. So now I'm going to do a secondary harvest from the same set of clones. How do I improve on that without knowing what I've done uh, to get to mm. that point? And I mean, you, you're working over a long period. You can't remember everything that you did over a, you know, a three, six, nine month period. So for me, it came about kind of trying to consistently, I'm working with the same genetic. So I'm consistently mm -hmm. trying to get more from that, from that same uh, genetic. And I have been documenting what I've been using and what I've been doing and putting more sort of structure into it to try and improve because otherwise, you know, it's just too much much uh too much hit and miss you might have a great harvest one time but then now mm. you're going to try and recreate that but it's so long down the line you, it's near impossible and i mean outdoors you're looking at an even longer season you know so mm. if you're wanting to improve as a home grower in your space you should be taking information from you know where did it do well what what you know where was the problem parts of my garden what did i do what didn't i do how can i improve to get better and 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 better season on season I absolutely love this. I mean, it's it's exactly the way uh, it, it's it, yeah, it's almost like the economics of it is also speaking because the minute legislation comes in and says, say, for instance, you, recreational weed can be uh, bought and sold, uh, weed can be bought and sold recreationally, you know, if they if they pass a law on that people, there's going to be manda mandatory testing, there's going to be um, those sort of uh, labeling and standardization and ingredients lists involved and at the moment when you're selling drugs 
uh, illegal th- things. They're not testing all drugs. You know, to, uh, I saw another documentary about you know drugs. All, there's no testing. Even weed, you don't. You don't uh, if you're buying weed at the moment, most of the time it's not being tested, um, and there's no incentive to grow. You're kind of just happy you're getting it. But when it comes down to a point of like labeling, buying something that says it's 18% and now it's the same strain, but why was it two months ago? Why was it 9%? And if they're buying for CBG, if they're buying for, uh, you know, different components of it, you're going to have to. It's, it's, that's the way of making a sustainable product, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry, a bit of a rant. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Chris, any suggestions for how someone could get started capturing mm. data? Maybe on a sort of uh, on a smaller scale. What kinds of things would you suggest that people start looking at to get to get started? Well, the the best thing mm. that I found in the beginning is to try and look at the plant through its various growth stages. Like specifically with flowering, you'll notice the difference between week one to week eight. You know, week one you see the the, the original primordial formation and it starts packing. Then mm. you see the pistols start forming and then the calyx is emerging. You can note, note where on which days those various growth characteristics and morphological characteristics start emerging. Um, you can make other notes like the calyx to leaf ratio after you've trimmed it. You know, how much bud do you get? How much leaf do you get? How much of that was trimmed? Um, did it contain sugar leaf? Um, once you've done your extractions on that, what was your conversion? So for mm. instance, you may have 100 grams of dry material from that 20 grams was trim did you get a 10 percent conversion then you can you know develop a little model around that mm. um different strains may have different conversion ratios so maybe you get a, a strain that's majority sugar leaf but it may have 30 percent extraction so you can start understanding there that may potentially be an american cultivar where they've selected for an extraction rich market whereas a european market may still select for flour and then they may have 50 percent THC in that sense. So yeah. that's where I was saying you need to kind of think about the end chain user and what you'd like to design your cultivar towards. Mm. So so that's that's very important. So to think about a low stretch versus a high stretch. Yeah. Uh, maybe you get a, a cultivar that just just measure it in the beginning before you you flip your lights is it ten centimeters? Then week one is it is it two three times its size? So you can kind of understand then when you'd want to flip your lights so that your plant doesn't get too high to to hit the, the lights because not yeah. everybody everybody knows it's not great <laughs> <laughs> so, it is an issue yeah yeah, yeah you're, so you're spot on with, growing, for instance yeah with with uh, a couple of things like you know like you said like think about what you're going for at the end of it at the end of the day you know if you want to go for cbd you know, those are those metrics that you need to watch for are going to change. You know, if you want to go for, let's say, okay, maybe more extraction versus flower, the things you're measuring are probably going to be more like your, you know, uh, what sort of trim you're getting and what sort of like percentage of sort of resin and dryness and this and that, for instance, whereas, you know, different outcomes are going to have different metrics at- associated with it. Um, yeah, if you know what you're going for at the, the end and then you can keep those metrics, that's probably going to be the best way that you're going to really analytically improve year on year and actually maybe even have a formula that like you were saying the data transfer between generations and being able to pass it on to another person sell it for instance you know and it will be easier to scale if you're Mm. trying to upscale the hardest part about up like if you're if you're comfortable on a small scale and now all of a sudden you're wanting to you might think you're an excellent grower and you might be on a small scale but then Mm. you try and upscale and all of a sudden you run into issues because you don't have operating procedures because you don't have data so i think it's uh, i think it's really important and i I think for anyone thinking like it sounds like homework you know it's it's definitely going to yield you results over Mm. the over over the long run and allow you to be more professional i would say someone uh, with data is definitely seen as more professional i think it's but i mean like if you if you look on a very in-depth level just for example mm. if you look at like shot volume and injection volumes of fertigation feeds into the pot so mm. if you're growing maybe 10 plants and you're feeding 80 mils per plant that's only 800 mils mm. if you're growing 150 plants all of a sudden you, you're injecting a whole lot more water so now you need to account with that into the VPD charts mm. and you know all of those various aspects can only fully be conceptualized with big data capture so we almost yeah. got to the point that you capture so much data that it becomes difficult to manage the data and that's where you need the, the, the troll masters and whatnot to start yes. so mm. that you, you can actually have I call it investor ready data where the data is packaged in a sense that it actually means something yeah um, yes, because for instance that would be in the sense where you you have a tent 
you harvest two different cultivars, they're in the same environment. Um, you might you notice the one harvests 500 grams, one harvests 400 grams. Already you know that the 500 grams, unless it's a, com a cannabinoid you're selecting for, would mm. be more likely to be selected. Yes. So, the point yeah. of the story is, sorry kids, if you think one day you want to grow up and grow weed, it's going to be just uh, chilling in a greenhouse with, you know, uh, uh, a couple of plants. It's unfortunately not the way weed growing is on the big scale. Same with apple farming and mangoes and avocados. You know, if they can get their avocados freaking 1% bigger, that could result in say millions of rands of extra turnover over a few years or one extra change. So it is going down that route. And unfortunately, Chris, we have reached, uh, we've reached our time limit, but yeah, we would like to say, uh, just say a quick thanks to Kier and for yourself for, for coming on. And we look forward to having you on again in the future. Oh, thank you guys. It was great to be on board. Awesome. See ya. Yeah. Cheers, Chris. Brilliant, eh? Sorry, I went yes. on a bit of a rant. Uh, Data gets Andy excited. Uh, <laughs> no, I think this is a big topic for the professional industry. And, you know, there are mm. guys, guys and people who are doing this kind of research and work on the larger scale. And for people who are aspiring, I think getting these kinds of ideas is, is beneficial because, you know, we're going to have a very professional grow industry in already. We do in the in the, you know, for those who have been able to license and it's just going to get more and more professional. It so, appeals like, to me because we, since day one, dude, we've been trying to make our, this industry not, uh, it's not a stoner that, you know, that it is a stoner industry and we're proud that it is, but it's not that, that, that image. What's it? That reputation, the stereotype behind it is not um is not fair you know we're trying to change that from you know from the ground up and unfortunately it's like it's kind of that's the way it's going and like that's the way the world is going to go and and we want it to be you know we want us to be the forefront of that sort of level of growing and yeah we're ready to embrace it and and uh, I think at the end of the day, we're going to get danker nugs from it and safer nugs and better products all around. So, yeah, I, I do get a bit of a semi for it. <laughs> Dank nugs for all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Yeah, guys, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, you can always check us out on all of your favorite uh, podcast apps. Um, we have a Telegram group. We have an Instagram page. You can find us pretty much everywhere on the Internet. And we shall check you guys next week. Peace and love. Peace.